is Dirty Story Night, a competitive erotic fan fiction uh, podcast. We are in the middle of our monster series right now, and you're about to hear Dan Kondo. So, before we begin, we'd like to thank It's All Been Done Presents, which can be found at IABDPresents.com. It's an entertainment network based in Columbus, Ohio, with podcasts, written work, and more. This week, I'd like to recommend the Oscars Are My Super Bowl, hosted by film buff Amanda Iman, where she's going to talk movies with her friends, and at least one person involved in the podcast has not seen the movie, so you get a brand new take on that. So please go over to IBDPresents.com and check it out. I'd also encourage you to check out the store page of IBDPresents.com, because there's now some cool merchandise. And now, Dirty Story Night. The, the clue was my politics when we were when I was complaining about the word. I was laughing. You were like, oh, it's something you, I don't remember what you said. I was like, you know my politics. Nothing. I, I, all I just, I, I just kind of felt that there's something that... Evil, evil core. Evil core. Evil core. Yeah, that's okay, but that's why. He said store, he, uh, dance and market. You said evil. Yeah. I thought about it for a second, and I was like, I started going through... Saying, Either Walmart or Apple. One of the two. Hey. <laughs> Okay. On a chilly Halloween night, while the neighborhood children skipped about, a boy and girl sat in the middle of a pumpkin patch far away from the other children who were collecting their fill of candy. The girl had blonde hair and was dressed in a pink princess costume, anxiously fidgeting as the boy, dressed in his normal clothes, gazed around as if waiting for something to appear. The little girl began to whine, Oh, Linus, I can't believe I let you talk me into coming out to this stupid pumpkin patch on Halloween night. I could be out getting a year's worth of candy right now. <laughs> Linus looked at her with a hurt expression on his face. But Sally, I have a good feeling about this year. The great pumpkin is sure to rise up and give us Halloween presents this year. <laughs> Sally leaned on a nearby pumpkin and sighed. Then a sly grin began to creep across her face. Well, since we are out here all alone, I guess we could find something fun to do while we wait. Linus lit up. Like singing pumpkin carols to herald the great pumpkin's arrival? Sally grabbed Linus by the collar and threw him on top of a big pumpkin nearby. <laughs> no, my sweet baboo. I've got something better in mind. <laughs> Sally wrestled off Linus's pants as he struggled in surprise. Sally, what are you doing? This is not proper. What if someone sees? <laughs> Sally grinned as she whipped out the struggling boy's pecker. Nobody's around for miles, sweetie. Just let me enjoy this. Sally slipped Linus's small flaccid filler into her mouth and began to suck hard, trying to make it erect. Linus, despite his protests, couldn't stop his breeding bat's natural reaction to such stimulation, and he could feel it begin to stiffen inside Sally's wet embrace. His pickle tickled with shameful delight, and he began to moan with his impending climax. Sally was young, but she knew enough from watching her mom and the mailman. She knew the white stuff was coming. Not yet, my darling, said Sally coyly. I need to have my fun. She shoved Linus over and perched herself on top of the pumpkin, lifting her pink princess dress to present her perfect pretty pussy. Sally pointed at it as Linus stared. If you want to finish, you need to put it in here. Linus, torn by reason and lust, fell to his animalistic desires and stepped forward, his bald ballistic boy bar pulsing, ready to blast his baby batter. Linus pressed his cranny axe against Sally's clam. The lips were very moist, but pressed tightly together. The slightest touch reignited the boy's lust, and he pressed on. Sally was still a virgin, though she touched herself very often, and her tight twat hesitantly let the pulsing probe in. Linus thrust in and out, and in his excitement, he drove it in too far and broke Sally's hymen. She shrieked, but the momentary pain was soon replaced with greedy pleasure. She was getting her man. Linus, unknowing of what he'd done, noticed a sudden increase in how wet and slick Sally's sweet slip became. She began to bleed unnoticed by the young lovers. The blood from Sally's pussy trickled down her ass and slid down the rind of the pumpkin she rested on. The blood dripped onto the earth and was absorbed by the thirsty roots beneath. Linus couldn't hold back. His blaster was ready to blow. Oh, Schultz! <laughs> Linus <laughs> as his thick load shot deep inside Sally, filling her up with his potent seed. <laughs> Sally cried out in delight, joining Linus in his animalistic call. Their cries were then joined by another, a strange, echoing roar that seemed to emanate from the great gourd they were sitting upon. 
Suddenly the earth began to quake and rumble beneath the children, knocking them off the pumpkin and onto the ground. A thin beam of light pierced through the pumpkin's shell and began to carve jagged lines into it. Flames burst forth from the pumpkin, blasting pieces of rind and seeds everywhere, revealing a crooked grin and menacing eyes. Vines began erupting forth from the ground and thrashed about while the giant pumpkin began to rise up on a huge stalk, more vines writhing beneath it as it climbed higher and higher. The great pumpkin had finally arrived. The children marveled at it, their mouths open in awe, then a deep voice echoed from within the flames of the pumpkin. By the blood of a virgin, I have been summoned here. I, the great pumpkin, shall grant you one wish. Speak now, for time is short. Linus leapt up and spoke. Oh, great pumpkin, please grant me my wish by showing all of my friends you exist. They've not believed me for years, but I must show them that I spoke true. Show them your power. The pumpkin, the flames flashed inside the great pumpkin's eyes. Your wish is granted. Great vines dove deep into the ground, snaking their way towards the nearby houses. Suddenly the screams of children pierced the night, but they were silenced as quickly as they began. The great pumpkin roared and the great vines resurfaced, each one tightly clutching a costumed child writhing and screaming. Linus called to them all, Friends, do not be afraid. This is the noble doing of the great pumpkin. You see? Do you all see now? He is truly real and magnificent. Lucy shrieked, You blockhead, my lungs are being crushed. <laughs> Linus calmly turned to the huge fiery pumpkin. Oh, great pumpkin, please reveal your benevolent powers to them as I wished. The great pumpkin erupted flames, lighting up the entire field in ominous dancing light. More vines came forth, grabbing Lucy by her wrists and ankles, pulling her limbs taut, making her scream in sudden pain. Linus, make it stop, called Lucy. But Linus gazed on in awe. The great vines tightened. Lucy futilely screamed. The great pumpkin bellowed, and Lucy's arms and legs were torn from their sockets at odd angles, mangling her body in the process. Her screams faded as she bled out. Her mangled, bloody form held aloft momentarily before being tossed into the fiery maw of the demon pumpkin, who chomped on her corpse loudly. The other children were horrified and began shrieking and crying. The great pumpkin had only begun its terror. It grabbed Schroeder, ripping him in half, his spine trailing behind his upper half like a weird tail as he fell to the ground. Peppermint Patty found every orifice of her body being invaded by rough vines. They snaked their way through her internal organs, quickly running all the way through her before they expanded rapidly, making her body explode. The great pumpkin plunged two vines through Marcy's glasses and deep into her eye sockets, crushing her eyes and breaking through her skull. The vines proceeded to work around her cranium violently, turning her brain into a mushy liquid before removing her head entirely, danging her body over its hungry jaws to let the blood drain out to drink. It then took her head and lit her brain mush on fire, creating a sort of grotesque jack-o'-lantern as the flames shone through what was once Marcy's eye sockets. Linus ran forward and called to the fiery demon, Great Pumpkin, I implore you, please cease these travesties. This is not what I wanted. You are supposed to be a kind and benevolent spirit. But his eloquent speech was cut short for a vine had shot down his throat, diving down through his internal organs and out through his anus, muffling his screams of intense agony. Poor Linus was hoisted into the air over the hungry jaws of the spirit he had waited and yearned for for years. The vine rapidly recoiled out through Linus's mouth, bringing his throat and shreds of his internal organs out with it. The last thing Linus saw before he perished was the teeth of the great pumpkin closing over top of him as he fell into its flame-filled gullet. Having consumed the one who summoned it, the great pumpkin howled into the night and disappeared back down into the earth, a long trail of vines following it back to hell, leaving Charlie Brown and Sally behind in the wake of the massacre. As the sun rose up over the pumpkin patch, all the authorities found at the scene were the mangled corpses of those who weren't devoured and the surrounding pumpkins covered in the blood of all. And in the center of the field were Charlie Brown and Sally, laying on their backs, dead from shock, their eyes forever glued open, never forgetting what they saw. <laughs> Are you ready for this? <laughs> Were you surprised? Yeah, that, that was quite a start. <laughs> there is plenty of food if anybody wants more food.